Good morning. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is wonderful to have you here with us in this time of worship at Zion, whether you're here physically or worshiping with us online. It is wonderful again to have you a part of our Christian family. And it is great to be with you. Uh, I was not in a good place last Sunday, so I'm really grateful that Pastor Andy could uh, fill in for me. And it is wonderful to be back with you here today. Uh, also, happy Mother's Day so, uh, to all you moms out there. And uh, even if you're not a biological mom, I was really blessed uh, to have uh, women in my life to kind of help nurture me and help me in my own faith journey. And as a kid, I, it was kind of all hands on deck with me. So I am really grateful, and, but a special thanks to all you, you moms out there. Also today, not only are we blessed with a, just a gorgeous morning, but we are here to celebrate uh, little Paisley Alice's baptism today. And so we have family and friends here, and I just welcome you. It is just wonderful to, to share in this milestone with you today. Also continued prayers for the family of Don Sell as uh, his family just still grieves and mourns, and so we just lift them up to you as well. When we get to the psalm reading for today, we're going to read it responsibly, and so there's some instructions or rubrics in the bulletin, and so when we get there, the pulpit side over here, you're going to read the odd verses, and over here, you're going to read the even verses. There's an insert in your bulletin to follow along with that, and I'll read both to just kind of help you. So as we uh, prepare for worship today, let us bow our heads and open our hearts to God in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you not only for the gift of your Son, but we thank you for the gift of baptism and the promises that you make to us in it to be present with us always, to know that we can turn to you and find forgiveness and find love that overflows not only in our own hearts, but to the relationships around us and the gift of your Holy Spirit that breathes new life into our lives, our relationships, and into your church. And so we thank you, Jesus, for being here with us today. Amen. Please join with me in our, our thanksgiving for baptism this morning. You can find that in your bulletin or up on the screen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Refreshed by, refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains of our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us the companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts, shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God, now and forever. Amen. Let us join together in singing our gathering hymn, Love Divine, All Love Excelling. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 4. <clears throat>
The Lord be with you. Please join with me in our prayer of the day. O oh God, you have prepared for those who love you joys beyond understanding. Pour into our hearts such love for you that, loving you above all things, we may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading comes from Acts chapter 10. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. Then Peter said, Surely no one can stand in the way of their being baptized with water. They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. So he ordered that they be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then he asked Peter to stay with them for a few days. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now if you would take out your insert, we'll join in reading Psalm 98 responsibly. Again, the odd verse. This will be read by the people on the pulpit side and baptismal side for the even verses. <coughs> Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made his salvation known and revealed his righteousness to the nations. He has remembered his love and his faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout joy to the Lord. All the earth burst into jubilant song with music. Make music to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the sound of singing, with trumpets and the blast of the ram's horn. Shout for joy before the Lord the King. Let the sea resound and everything in it, the world and all who live in it, joy. Let them sing before the Lord. He comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples with equity. And now, Eric, we want to thank you for being with us here today. And of course, when mom asks you on Mother's Day, you, you yeah. have to come and sing. But. <laughs> But you just have a beautiful voice, and so thank you for helping to lead us in worship today. Thank you. So thank you.
Thank you, Eric. Hi, Paisley. See you in a couple minutes. <laughs> Our gospel reading this morning comes from St. John, chapter 15, continuing from the reading that you had from last week. Jesus says, as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because servants don't know their master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I have learned from my Father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And so whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command. Love each other. The gospel of our Lord. Praise you, O Christ. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, again, we thank you for the gift of this day, and we thank you, Jesus, for being present with us. And we pray in your name, Jesus, that would, you would shepherd us into a deeper understanding of your truth and enable us through the power of your Holy Spirit to leave, live into your commandment that we might truly love each other as you have loved us. In your holy name we pray, amen. You know, when we think of kind of different regions or people, we kind of associate different kind of characteristics to them. So when I think about people in France, I tend to think of the Eiffel Tower and really good food. When I think of Britain, I think of the monarchy and I think of beautiful literature. When I think of Montana, I think of the big sky. When I think of Minnesota, I think of 10,000 lakes. When I think of my relatives in California, well, I think California is just strange. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. <clears throat> when I think of Wisconsin, I think of dairy farms, and I think of cheese, and I think of quarterbacks that become Minnesota Vikings. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> when I think of Baptists, I think of piety. When I think of Pentecostals, I think of the Holy Spirit. When I think of Lutherans, I think of grace. So what does Jesus say is the most important virtue or quality or characteristic of a Christian? If I'm not mistaken, I think you sang about it last week. They'll know we are Christians by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. And in our gospel reading from last week and for today, it's not even an option. It's not if you choose to love or whom you choose to love. But Jesus says, if you are going to be one of my disciples, you will not only love, but you will love in the same way that I loved. And there's a difference. We all need to remember that at some point we're all going to have to stand before the Lord and we're going to have to give an account for our lives and how we lived and walked on this earth. And your desire to love makes all the difference. But you might say, well, what about faith? As Lutherans, we're justified by grace through faith. But sometimes I think we have a different understanding of that word than maybe Luther did. When Luther talked about faith, he envisioned somebody coming and standing before the foot of the cross and allowing that cross to illuminate not only the sin that is in our lives, but how we are in bondage to that sin and the brokenness in our lives. And Luther says that when we look into the face of Jesus and we realize who he is and what he has done for us, 
It is that love of Christ that pierces our heart. And it's a faith that says, I have nowhere else to turn. And so it's a trust in which we are willing to abandon our whole lives to Jesus. Here I am, Jesus. Take me, fill me, use me. Sometimes when we talk about faith, sometimes what's going on in our minds is more along the lines of belief. To say, well, I believe in Jesus, I believe in God, but when we think that way, there's real no commitment, there's no cost. It kind of goes to what Paul writes about in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 6. He says, for in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision is of any value. Circumcision is the Old Testament equivalent of baptism. Essentially, Paul is saying, what does it matter if we just simply go through the ritual of circumcision or baptism or have this certificate or that certificate? He goes on to say the only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. The only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. But what does Jesus mean then when he commands us to love others? Because that word love we tend to attach to so many different things. Yes, I love God, I love my family, I love my church, I love serving, I love people. But I also love potato chips. I love sports. I love being out in nature, and I love being served. And I love my dog sometimes more than I love people. <laughs> There's even a bumper sticker that says, I love bumper stickers. <laughs> we use the word love so much that it can mean just about anything and everything and nothing all at the same time. So again, what does Jesus mean when he says that we are to love others? One of the limitations of the English language is that we only have one word for love, but in Greek there are three. There's eros love, there's filial love, and there's agape love. And especially how that last one, agape love, relates to marriage may help us to understand the kind of love that Jesus Christ is talking about. And I think marriage is an appropriate metaphor because Jesus is often referred to as the bridegroom. And the relationship that we have with him is a covenant relationship, a relationship that's motivated by love and bound together by promises. And so what kind of love do you need to have in a marriage so it's not only committed and deep and life-giving? A number of years ago, there was a researcher at Yale University by the name of Robert Sternberg, and this is the question that he wanted to answer. Again, what kind of love do we have to have so that, again, our relationships are not only committed, but deep and life-giving? And what he found as he was studying marriage is that this understanding of love can permeate into all of the different types of relationships that we have. And so he says, think about it. And so what he did is he did a longitudinal study over 30 years. He had thousands of couples, and he journeyed with them to answer that question. And he says, when we first fall in love with somebody, he referred to it as eros love, or as that kind of passionate love. I remember Heather saying the first time she saw me, her heart started to flutter. <laughs> or maybe it was the other way around. But you know how it is when you fall in love with somebody for the first time, your heart races, your palms sweat, you, your mind races, you can't stop thinking about them, you can't wait to see them again or talk to them on the phone. It's this physiological thing that happens inside of us. And we feel that love. 
But what Sternberg found is that you can't feel that passion 10 out of 10 every day of the week. If you did, you'd be a rabbit. <laughs> And so he says, there needs to be a deeper love, a deeper connection, a deeper commitment. And so this next type of love he described as filial love, which is an emotional love. And so I'll talk to couples, especially when they're coming in for premarital counseling or others, and they'll, they'll say, we are so in love. And I'll ask them, I go, well, how do you know you're in love? Well, he makes me feel so valued and important. She always encourages me, and she's always there for me. And when you unpack it, what we realize is that with that emotional love comes a whole litany or a litmus test that says, I know you love me when. Right? I know you love me when. You meet my needs or my expectations. But the reality of being human is that life is tough, right? And life can be brutal, and it can be cruel, and it can be overwhelming, and it can be exhausting. And sometimes you find yourself in the place where you have nothing else to give. <laughs> Amen on that? And you want to love? and you want to forgive, but it's just not there. Sometimes you just feel dry. And the reality is, too, is when we're living off of that emotional love, it's always tied to needs and expectations, but the reality is, is that more often than not, people are not going to meet your needs or they're not going to meet your expectations. And then, so usually five, seven, a number of years later, couples will come in and see me, and they're thinking about getting a divorce. And I go, what's wrong? And they go, well, I don't, I don't feel love anymore. I said, that's because the only two experiences of love that you have have been conditional. If I feel passion, then I must have love. If you're meeting my needs and my expectations, then I, might, I must have love. But if I don't, then what? That's why 50% of the marriages in our society don't work. Is people are trying to operate and be in relationship conditionally. And then when we don't feel it, we become frustrated, we become angry, we become sad, we put up walls, we push people away. And then we wonder why we have the world that we have. Those first two types of love are hardwired into us. And unfortunately, a lot of times we project that kind of love onto God. Oh, God will only love me if I do this or if I don't do that, right? But what Sternberg found is that there needs to be another kind of love, a deeper love. And what he also found is that this love seems to come outside of us. It's not something that we can just sort of generate through our own volition or willpower. And this type of love is called agape love. And while eros and filio are if then, agape love is in spite of the fact. So every day when Heather looks at me in the morning and she goes, well, you know, he doesn't quite look like he used to. <laughs> but I still love him. You know what? Fred isn't always meeting my needs and my expectations. And you know what? Some days he's just annoying and frustrating. But you know what? I still love him. That's the love of God that is revealed in Jesus Christ. God doesn't love you because you're perfect or you have it all worked out or figured out. God loves you simply for the fact that you are a child of God. And in spite of the fact that you might do this or not do this or say this or not say that, 
that this type of love is not only unconditional, but it's committed. This is the love that God is promising to Paisley in her baptism today. This is the love that God seeks to give us each and every day. Because I guarantee you, if that type of love permeated your heart, your life, and your relationships, and this world would be very different. And you know you want it. We all do, because that's the way God created us to be filled with that kind of love. And there is an amazing thing that happens when we understand that and when we desire that and when we take that leap of faith and offer ourselves to God and the Holy Spirit and that love begins to flow inside of us. There's something that begins to happen in our mind and our hearts and it's called active indifference. All the things and the relationships that we used to be attached to in a conditional way are no longer that important to us. What does it matter if I win an argument? <laughs> if I sever a friendship? It doesn't matter to me anymore. Why did I get so, such a rush out of buying something new? <laughs> Those things just aren't important to me anymore. The only thing that become, that we're attracted to that's important to us is not only this loving relationship that we have with God, but how can I be a gift? How can I be a blessing? How can I love somebody else? And so the final aspect of this love is that it is always seeking. Your eyes are changed. All of a sudden, you begin to see not only the things that you want and that you desire, but all of a sudden, you see the person who is hurting. You see the person who is struggling, who is suffering, who is on the margins. And there's something that wells up inside of you that says, I cannot pass by on the other side. And it compels you to stop, and it compels you to cross over, and it compels you to take that step of grace to that other person. And there's a cost with it, but it's a cost that we're willing to bear because we know what that love does in our own lives. And there's nothing that we desire more than to share it with others. Amen. Let us join together now in singing our hymn of the day which is, Jesu, Jesu, fill us with your love.
As we prepare to celebrate Paisley's baptism, we take a moment to reflect on the significance of baptism. So if you'd like to take out your orange sheet, you can follow along, and, or lime green, whatever it is, and then on the back there's a, a hymn that we'll sing together. God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. By water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. We are united with all the baptized in the one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. Called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and the love of God, do you desire to have your daughter, Paisley Alice, baptized into Christ? If so, please say we do. People of God, do you promise to support Paisley as you are able and pray for her in her new life in Christ? If so, please say we do. Would you please rise if you are able? I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? If so, please say, we renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ the Son of God? Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. In the river Jordan, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the powers of sin and death and raised us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that all those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ and the unity of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Yeah, you're not going to be yawning much longer. <laughs> Come on over here, sweetheart. <laughs> if you want to kind of hold her. Yep. Oh, that's okay. She can cry. That's all right. Paisley Alice, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, hi. You can take this and you can kind of wipe that. Okay. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through the water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Paisley with the gift of your Holy Spirit the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence now and forever. Amen. And so if you can bring her over here a little bit. Paisley Alice, child of God, you have been sealed with the Holy Spirit. There you go. And marked with the cross of Christ forever. Yeah. Got something else for you, too. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. And so, Paisley, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. I'd like to hold this just for a second. You can blow it out in a minute. Okay. Let us welcome Paisley to our Christian family. Please read with me. 
We welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. Amen. Now on the back or on the screen up here is a lullaby and a blessing that we're going to sing to Paisley. So if she'll go with me, we'll walk around a little bit. Alive in the risen Christ and by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer us in steadfast love. Let us pray. Faithful Savior, you conquer the world not with weapons, but with undying love. You plant your word in the hearts of the nation's leaders and give them your spirit so that the peoples of the world may live in peace. Lord, in mercy, hear our prayer. Caring healer, you forgot no one and accompany the lonely. Be present with those who are sick and suffering, those whom we now name before you. Provide for those needing homes or medical care and point us towards life-changing responses to their needs in our communities. Be with the dying and the grieving. We pray that you be with Don's family and those whom we now name before you. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, as a mother comforts her child, you comfort us. Bless mothers and mothering people in our lives. Comfort those who miss their mothers, mothers who grieve, those who grieve because they cannot be mothers, and those who have never known a loving mother. Lord, in your mercy. Gentle Redeemer, all who die in you abide in your presence forever. 
We remember with thanksgiving those who have shared your love throughout their lives. Keep us united with them in your lasting love. Lord, in your mercy. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I invite you now to join with me in singing our offering hymn, Jesus Loves Me. Just a couple of announcements to share with you. Uh, first of all, we'd like to invite you to the Fellowship Hall if you'd like to join us for some coffee and other refreshments and some fellowship time. And then I uh, just heard from uh, Bishop Lori. Uh, so our bishop is going to be here with us on June 20th. So I'm really excited about that. She's a wonderful leader and very gifted preacher and teacher. So we're looking forward to that. Now let us receive the blessing. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face shine on us and be gracious unto us. May the Lord look upon us with favor and grant us peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now join together in singing our ascending hymn, Lord, dismiss us with your blessing.
Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.